Katie Camillo says she was the shyest child in the world, the kind of kid who wouldn't say boo to a goose. Well, she found her voice as a writer of stories for young people. Among her best-selling books are Because of Win dixie the recent Flora and Ulysses, and the Newbery Award-winning Tale of Despero. She'll spend the next two years as both author and ambassador for stories and reading. Katie Camillo lives in Minneapolis and joins us from there. And congratulations to you, and it's nice to talk to you again. Well, thank you very much for being willing to talk to me. So the, shy, books. the shyest child in the world <laughs> becomes a national <laughs> ambassador. How did, how did that happen? Well, I know there's a really rich irony in that, isn't there? And I, I'm not exaggerating. Well, I do tend to exaggerate. I'm, I'm a storyteller. But really, I was just like, if I, if I had a dime for every time an adult said, cat got your tongue, you know, and my mother uh, was a very outgoing person and she could never believe that I couldn't run into the store and ask somebody some kind of question. So how did I end up here? Um, I ended up here by telling stories and telling stories uh, helped me connect with the world and it turned me into uh, somebody who can talk to people, I think. I don't know. I'm doing well, a pretty good job talking to you, right? You are. Well, so tell us what you, how you see this role and what you plan. Is, is it, do you, do you start off thinking that there's a problem that you need to address, a, a problem of young people in reading? I, I want to remind people, I don't want to think about it as a problem. I want to remind people of the great and profound joy that can be found in stories and that stories can connect us to each other and that reading together changes everybody involved. So I, I'm not coming at it from a problem angle, I'm coming at it from a, a celebration angle. That's what, how I would like to think of it. What, what, what books did that for you, brought you out of the shell you were talking about? Uh, well, one of them, and I was a kid who loved to read and uh, also a kid who was lucky enough to had a, I had a mom that read to me all the time. Uh, Island of the Blue Dolphins um, by Scott O'Dell uh, had a huge impact on me. Harriet the Spy, Louise uh, Fitzhugh. Um, I remember my mother reading me Beverly Cleary's Ribsy. Um, all of those books kind of um, did that thing of connecting me to myself and connecting me to the world and connecting me to the people around me. So that's kind of the message that I want to carry out into the world. And, that's and, what I hope to do. And, and do you think of, is, it, is reading reading or does it matter what young people are reading? I'm thinking about some of the, the books that gain tremendous currency, like The Hunger Games now and other ones you can think of at different times. Do you think just whatever they're reading is good, or, or do you think there certain things are more nourishing than others? Well, I'm not going to make judgments about what people are reading. I just want them to be reading, and I think reading one book leads to another book, so I'm just going to uh, celebrate the whole ball of wax. I just want people, I also want people to know that um, this is, you know, that kids' books um, can be for adults as well. There are a lot of different ways to connect to uh, a story. And I think Harry Potter has actually gone a long way to convincing people that um, adults can read kid books. But I'd like to just uh, bring more people into the room. The other, thing, of, the other thing that becomes part of this conversation, of course, these days is, is technology and the sort of competition for... Uh, for young people's uh, attention. Do you, do you think of all these things, the, uh, you know, whether it's video games or tablets, do you think of them as the, the enemy or, or is there a way to make them friends? How do, you, how do you think about it? I think that it's a matter of balance and moderation. And I think that my role here is just to remind everybody of the power of story. And it can be just as um, uh, entertaining and engaging as uh, a video game. So again, I'm not gonna say, no, don't do that, but rather remember story. And story is what makes us human in a way. So I just, I'm here to, to say story can be a powerful thing. I remember when we first talked, and now it's 10 years ago when yeah. you won the Newbery Award, but 
you came to writing late yourself, right? You, this was not, uh, you weren't a natural, you yeah. just sort of came into it. No, I'm not a natural, I'm a late bloomer. Um, and I feel so fortunate um, to have ended up where I've ended up as somebody who gets to tell stories for a living. But I didn't start writing until I was almost 30 years old. And I didn't get published until I was 36 or 37. So, um, uh, but it was something that I always knew that I wanted to do. And I finally sat down and started trying to do it. So, hey, let's hear it for all the late bloomers and for dreams coming true, right? And I, I think I read that, this is a little hard for me to believe, but maybe you can tell me. <laughs> you received 450 rejection letters before anyone agreed to publish you? I wish that I could tell you that that <laughs> is uh, erroneous, but it is not. I kept a notebook where I kept track of everything, where I sent it, when it came back. So that is the case. So I, I, I sent stories out for six years um, before anything happened. And, um, and I, when I go and I talk to kids, I go, imagine if I had given up at like the, at, at the rejection letter, you know, at, at the 200, I wouldn't be here. So if there's any message that I can give in that respect, it's, um, you know, persistence and uh, um, not giving up on your dream. All right. Well, Kate DiCamillo, congratulations again and good luck in your new role, the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. Thanks so much. Thank you.